everyone. We are in the middle of a very interesting period in life. As of yesterday, India has just finished two months of an unprecedented lockdown because of the coronavirus. And in the middle of that period, we're discussing a very interesting topic today. Is this the right time to start a company? Now, at your story, we've hosted many, many panels in the past on how to start up, how to get funding, how to get uh, product market fit, how to scale up, how to go overseas, what legal help do you need, etc. This is the first time we're having a panel called, is this the right time to start a company? Timing is everything in the success of a startup, as you all know. And joining us today, we have two very young co-founders joining us, Pramod Ghatge and Shahid Memon. Both are co-founders of Unbox Robotics. This is a startup developing a first of its kind robotics-based packaging sorting solution for the global logistics industry. Both of them are in the late 20s and are fresh from the cohort of an organization called Entrepreneur First. EF Entrepreneur First calls itself the world's leading talent investor. They are the ones who made these two co-founders meet and also helped them launch this startup. They claim to be the best place in the world to find your co-founder and build a tech startup from scratch. As the world's leading ta talent investor, they invest time and money in talented and ambitious individuals. They help them find each other as co-founders, grow their idea and launch a company. So this model has been perfected for over 2000 people over the years. 300 companies have been launched with this model from Entrepreneur First and they have a combined portfolio value of, guess what, $2 billion. So I'm sure you want to know a little bit more about how this works and how these two young founders can tell us about their own story. So to begin with, I want to say hello to Pramod Ghatge. Pramod Ghatge is the co-founder and CEO of Unbox Robotics. He graduated from NUS in Singapore and VJTI. Also did an entrepreneur studies program from Rakanathi Business School in Tel Aviv University. He has an extensive work experience at LNT, Bosch, Flipkart, and several startups across multiple countries, including India, Singapore, Israel, and China. Is very well experienced in the manufacturing and product design sectors, especially logistics, automation, and robotics. At Flipkart, by the way, he introduced India's first robot-based sorting solution in Bangalore to deploy close to 500 robots for parcel sorting processes right here in India. Joining him as co-founder and the CTO is Shahid Memon, who is the co-founder and CTO. He graduated from University of York and Gujarat Technology University. He worked earlier for companies like Beautiful Meme and Banora Robots, an expert in systems design, AI, data science, robotics, and intelligent systems. So welcome to the panel, Pramod and Shahid. How are you guys doing? Thanks a lot, uh, We are doing good. Uh, fortunately, we are safe. Uh, great, great. From yeah. Home. Yeah. Well, I just read out the formal description of your backgrounds. Tell us a bit more about you guys. Are you hobbyists? Do you tinker around? How did you get into this space? You have uh, business and technical backgrounds. How did you pick up marketing skills? How did you pick up business skills and so on? Why don't we start with you? Uh, Sure. So, uh, so if I, uh, as you mentioned, my background mainly comes from uh, manufacturing and logistics automation. Uh, so initially, my in the beginning of my career, I was mainly working in a large uh, organization like LNT. Uh, but thereafter, my I I was basically interested in pursuing studies abroad and uh, uh, getting into startup eco ecosystem. Uh, so Singapore helped me a lot in terms of uh, getting well versed with uh, the initial starting up exposure. Also uh, spent some time in uh, Israel for uh, uh, to get more experience in the startup world, working in a 3D printing space there with, with the founders in that particular domain. Uh, so these initial few years of my career uh, kind of gave me kind of an inspiration that I should also do a startup on my own. Uh, uh, I did some attempts there uh, back in 2015 and 16, uh, but uh, somehow those were not fruitful. Uh, then in 2016, I joined Flipkart uh, was working in Flipkart uh, in an automation team. And this is where I was looking at uh, deploying robotics and automation uh, technologies for Flipkart supply chain. And one of the projects I did with my team there was to deploy these 500 robots to uh, automate the sorting center in Bangalore. Uh, and this is the same area we are targeting through Unbox. So all these years kind of gave me the technology as well as the business kind of a background, uh, working with uh, across multiple countries and multiple cultures. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's turn to Shahid Mehmetam. Uh, Shahid, what is your what are some milestones in your journey so far? Yes, yeah, so uh, my interest lies uh, mostly on technical side and 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 uh, especially on multi robot systems. And how it evolved was like during my undergraduations, uh, I, I did my undergraduate from Ahmedabad, and uh, I had a professor who was particularly interested in uh, doing some work on swarm intelligence based algorithms. 
So I kind of got an initial uh, click on that. Uh, that further evolved and I thought of, you know, I should be extrapolating this to, you know, some kind of hardware work as well, more into you know, electronics and mechanical stuff. So I, I joined the course in York, uh, Autonomous Robotics Engineering, which also had the hint of some intelligence in that. So did some, uh, I did education there. I, I did some multi robot work in one of the companies, Beautiful Me. Uh, we basically had this uh, uh, environmental based uh, tiny robots, which will behave based on the environment around it. So it kind of, uh, my, my uh, interest keep on progressing there. I, I had a startup before and my co-founder from my, from my who was my classmate only. So we came back to India, did that startup. Again, more largely uh, focusing on uh, decoupled systems or uh, IoT, which is quite decoupled, not centralized kind of systems. Uh, did some work on that. Uh, also consulted few companies in USA for multi-robot moving solutions. So there's a more robots uh, where, where they wanted to have it as a service. So, you know, based on the requirement, the number of robots can be automatically deployed. So that kind of kept, kept on hitting me. Uh, that started didn't work well uh, the way I wanted it to be. Uh, then I uh, later uh, joined EF uh, to you know, try to find a new startup. And uh, hence, I, I ended up here now, where we are actually uh, doing a solution uh, which has multiple robots interacting and doing and solving some industry problems. Yeah. So currently, we are solving the problem in the uh, supply chain logistics field, where our customers are mainly in the e-commerce and logistics domain. Uh, our first solution is basically a multi-robot system, uh, which uses AI as a software tool uh, to do parcel sorting in very small footprint. So we save the footprint of, of a particular warehouse by by roughly 50 to 70 percent. And we also improve the productivity roughly by five times, like it goes up by roughly 400 uh, percent. And all this can be done on demand. The solution gets live in like a day or maybe a less than two weeks period versus the industry standard is roughly four to six months. Uh, so that's a significant reduction in terms of the time to install, get live, go live and uh, the space required for a particular uh, parcel sorting operation. Uh, so that's the uh, value creation we are doing using our technology. Very good. Thanks, Pramod. Thanks, Shahid. I can see that we now have more than 215 participants, which is excellent. So for those of you who are just joining us now, welcome about our discussion on behalf of your story and entrepreneur first. Welcome to this panel on uh, uh, is this the right time to launch a startup? We have with us Pramod and Shahid from Unbox Robotics. I can see a lot of questions coming in. I've got a few questions to go through and then we'll take questions from the audience okay so now as i mentioned earlier the timing of this panel is very interesting it's in the middle of this whole coronavirus crisis so my question for you guys is um would you say this is the right time to launch a company many people say that uh, a downturn is a good time to start for example uber and whatsapp and slack started off during various economic downturns but this is like no other economic downturn no one's ever seen something like this so is this a good time to start up guys what do you think shahid you want to start yeah, uh, so, well, uh, uh, surely this time is uh, not very good, not precedented one, and uh, things are a little slow, but but I think it's one of the perfect time to start because it's the time when the when the world is changing now, right? I mean, the, the way the world will operate will change. So there's a lot of cracks, a lot of gaps that uh, one can find in the market and can innovate. Someone, uh, what did you add? Yeah, I think his network is bad, but I can add more points. Yeah, yeah, in terms of timing, what, what do you say? Yeah. Yeah, so I feel... Uh, Am I audible? Yeah, uh, you froze very briefly for a second. So let's just finish with Pramod and then we'll come back to you. The first thing, as I think uh, Shahid mentioned, uh, currently the, the world is changing, right? In terms of a uh, lot of things. Uh, consumer behavior is changing. There are so many new opportunities uh, people have to solve for. Uh, there are new problems which are being identified at different organizations. So people can address those, those new problems. Uh, and if, if you are solving a problem right now, probably market will anyway force you to solve something very significant, uh, uh, of, uh, rather than just building another startup, you will be actually solving something very tangible, very, uh, substantial in terms of what the market wants. Uh, because these days it's, it's so many new, I would say problems people are, people or even industries is kind of, uh, are, are observing and, uh, these are the new opportunities for any. Uh, startup enthusiast uh, who wants to solve or who wants to build uh, new uh, solutions. That's a very good observation. There are many problems out there now and entrepreneurs love to look at problems and solve problems. How about you, Shahid? Would you agree with that in terms of timing? How, how does this make a good timing for a startup to get into the space? Yes, yes uh, totally. I mean, that's what Pramod mentioned, right? There's, because the world is changing because of this pandemic issue, there's a lot of cracks and a lot of gaps which can be easily identified and there's a room for innovation there. 
and and and, and we think it's, it's it's a perfect time to start something new uh, also one more thing i can add is uh, uh, you see a lot of people are moving online for discussions they are ready for new yes. uh, i would say ideation brainstorming uh, it, it's it's very i would say the people are approachable uh, if you want to talk to a decision maker in a in a big company uh, people are available <laughs> so that is one more added advantage if you want to validate your globally anywhere you want uh, uh, that can help you validate your particular problem statement you are solving for a lot of people are very interested in the entrepreneurship journey from the point of view of you know what's called day zero how did the whole thing begin now both of you met through this program called entrepreneurship first uh, entrepreneurs first so how did you hear about this program how did you start up what happened to you when you first joined the program can you share a little bit about your journey with ef uh, pramod mm-hmm. you want to start so for me it was actually uh, some of my friends in singapore had already started their journey in ef so i had already had some idea and uh, uh, at the same time i also got uh, uh, a kind of an interest or i would i would say inbound message from uh, ef when i was just looking at something new uh, uh, while i was in flipkart uh, so the timing was right i would say uh, that ef approached me and i was also interested and this is how i then applied and then uh, got selected for the uh, bangalore cohort uh, in 2019 how about you shahid anything to add to that yeah, so uh, for me it's like uh, i had a previous startup as i mentioned right and one of my ex colleague he basically uh, sent me uh, you know something that you know uh, he basically recommended me to uh, the uh, ef and basically ef got in touch at that time uh, i was a little bit uh, having the issue with my previous startup planning to do something new and it kind of hit at the right time so i explored more i read about ef uh, to some more extent and i figured out it's it's it makes more sense because you know you need to find the right co founder at first that's a, uh, that's a most important thing to start any startup and uh, yeah and applied to it uh, it was uh, and and i got inducted in the first uh, batch of india and yeah from then uh, I, i found promote actually we started interacting the very first day and uh, it has been uh, great so far so how did you begin choosing the problem area to get into both of you are into deep tech sort of robotics for supply chain logistics and so on so why did you choose deep tech and not something else like you know manufacturing or uh, healthcare or something of that sort why deep tech i think the deep tech part is the result of the problem it's like the kind of problem we are solving needs a deep tech uh, solution uh, so that the solution gets better and better uh, using ai and robotics uh, for the customers and that can that that is what is creating the value for the customer uh building a simple solution will not be i would say sustainable in the long term uh in terms of the value creation uh, uh, uh for the customers we are working with uh so it it's kind of a it's not like a i would say force fitting the technology it's the i would say uh identifying the hair on fire problem uh, and then creating a solution which is deep tech which actually helps us in, ter- in in terms of the value creation for the customers uh, so i mean industry 4.0 is on the horizon and and uh, as it is mentioned right there is a fusion of various technologies that is going to happen like from ai to robotics and uh, and 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 if you want to really differentiate uh, like for example our solution that we built up in the in the existing problem i think deep tech is the way where you can technically jump your solution to 10x better to the closest existing solution mm-hmm. secondly it creates a value like you have a, a patent you have a ip which is which is valuable it's 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 very not not very easy to copy and third thing it it just creates a new uh, uh, industry new spark or new ecosystem within the country so so i think uh, that, that that kind of driven me to be in this particular domain and uh, find a solution around that excellent yeah i think both of you are right it's a question of uh, scale engagement exponential value and so on and so forth so the next question for you would be uh what gap did you face in your work what uh, problems did you have and how did ef entrepreneurs first fill this gap how did it connect you guys and how was it complementary what you were looking for the other person had and so on and so forth so how did ef help you fill this gap if you look at the ef program right so they will uh, kind of like uh, select a high caliber people from across the country uh, with a lot of diverse expertise in technology as well as the industry and the business Uh, so this is like a kind of a getting everything every essential ingredient in the in the platter uh, in front of you then it's up to you who you want to partner with and ef has a very good structure of selecting the co-founder based on the background uh, then selecting the problem statement uh, the then uh, kind of a, a structure around how to go about building a solution 
uh, how to validate the problem statement, uh, sorry, the solution in the market. All these things, this, uh, there was a structure given by the EF team, uh, which was very essential in the few weeks in the beginning uh, when we started identifying the problems and then building the solution. Uh, so giving that structure was very, I would say, essential uh, rather than going from a lot of different things, focusing on one thing at a time was very uh, crucial uh, in the EF uh, journey for us in the first three months. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I agree with Pramod. And, and just to add on that, like, it's, I mean, it's very difficult to find a people from so many different backgrounds in one room. And uh, uh, EF has enabled that. So there's a lot of lot to learn, like, like, just from Pramod and me, we are doing something, but we have spoken to so many people in the cohort and learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, how 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 uncommon how common it is to find somebody who is making a, you know who was into the healthcare policy policy making and also doing some research on the olfactory for example. It's very rare combination, rare, rare kind of people you find in the in the in the cohort. So it's very interesting. You never know where you hit and what you hit, right? I mean, sometimes uh, solutions that you bring out with such a uh, such a uh, I mean different kind of people over there. It's crazy. Uh, Saying that, uh, EF has, uh, 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 what, what I think and what really helped us to innovate so quickly is a, is a continuous feedback loop, right? I mean, we, uh, uh, every time, every, like, right from, if, if you try to, you know, uh, uh, categorize your startup problem, you have a problem statement, you have a solution, you are saying, where, where are you doing in terms of traction? What are you doing in terms of go to market? It's a continuous feedback that you have. So it, it helps us to mature quickly and, and converge into that one uh, correct problem, which, which, which will click in the in the market very quickly uh, i think i think that's uh, that's something that ea brings in the table which is very rare and very, di very difficult to find anywhere else one of the many questions that has just come in is how exactly did you guys actually meet uh, was it through an online matchmaking thing or you no, no, no. Uh, one of you spoke and the other one was in the audience and said aha i need to meet this guy what what are the sequence of the actual yeah. first handshake sort of? uh, yeah don't want to go yeah. as uh, shahid was also mentioning right so so uh, we met each other in EF. Uh, Anthropod first uh, selects like a, a pool of, I would say, roughly 50 people or so in the cohort. And based on the other profiles, like for example, a person can identify potential five co-founders. So for example, if I join EF, I can shortlist maybe five of these 50 people who I feel that maybe there is a potential match. Uh, and then I start interacting with each other. Uh, so there was a point where I had like uh, multiple options uh, where I was talking to a few people and I thought that Shahid probably was the best, uh, of course now it's the best co-founder, uh, like in terms of the complementary skill sets. So we, we thought that there is a huge, uh, I would say, uh, complementary skill sets and the know-how and the industry exper expertise we had with each other. So, uh, so we, after interacting with potential co-founders in the program, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a six months program in the first three months, you basically form the team and you validate the problem statement, problem and solution. Uh, and this is where we uh, form the team on day one of the program of, of the third three months journey. Uh, and thereafter it was, uh, there was no need to break up because we were doing well. Uh, and this is how we met uh, each other. Yeah. Just to add on it, like uh, I mentioned breakup and, and one more thing that uh, EF brings on table is, is the minimum risk at breaking up with the co-founder, right? If you already find a company with somebody and you know things are get rolling, but it, it went on south, right? How what you do? It's very, very, very expensive to break up that time. Here it's like you are just in the very early stage. You're talking, you're thinking, you know, what do you think about it? You know, it didn't work out. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, on a good note, you leave and you, you try something else, right? So uh, that's a, a very good uh, uh, thing that uh, you have brings on the table. Very min minimize the risk of uh, uh, you know breaking up with the co-founder. I Saying that, like, yeah, me and Pramod, yeah, we, we, we just uh, started interacting from the kickoff day. Basically, uh, it's one event that we have organized just before the cohort starts, where, you know, just kind of breaking the ice between the team, between the cohort. We started talking and, you know, a few more people, of course, but, you know, kind of the thing went quite well. We thought, you know, the things, we both kind of like working with each other. Uh, the style of working is like same. We don't care what time you call each other stuff. Weekends, we generally work. So everything matters, not only just work provinces, and everything clicked quite well between us. So we continued and uh, we started, uh, you know, uh, identifying the problems in the industry with Pramod belong to, right? I am a tech guy. Uh, he's, a, he's a person who, who is into industry. We started exploring and seeing where we can really differentiate, where the problem really exists. And uh, we found this uh, sorting space to be a very interesting one where we can definitely innovate. So we explored more. We, we potentially w w worked up some concepts, uh, you, know, you know, whether this, this will make sense or not. And we started talking to customers. 
uh, generally to understand you know what they think about the solution and stuff and and things kept on going from there uh, we we kept on making our uh, uh, concept better better and better and just towards the end uh, we, we got through the panel and right now we are here okay. so it's a process um, yeah we go got finish finish yeah so just just to say that it doesn't means that you know if if we are the person we are the team you know from the very first day we joined and we are like we, we are very successful that's not the only criteria there are few few teams we broke seven times till they are as successful successful as we are so just to just to add the point it doesn't matter right i mean the, the break ups is so so not not very expensive and you can you can explore you can hustle between and uh, until you hit that right co founder so so that's what something uh, you brings on the table and which is very important i think Also, one both of you mentioned complementary skill sets many times. So, what exactly yes. do you mean by complementary skill set? Technical, marketing, or uh, international, local, Asia, Europe? I mean, what are some different kinds of uh, technical match? What about the emotional kind of match? Intellectual match? What are the different kinds of things that happen when actually, two people uh, become co-founders? Yeah, actually, I was going to address these two points. One is the on the complementary skill sets part. Second is on the kind of ambition you have uh, for your startup some people might say that okay i just want to work for like 2 3 years and then uh, maybe do something else how big you want to build your startup for like how long you are in the journey so these are the discussions we had in the beginning uh, that the scale should be really big whatever we are building is for the long term uh, also yeah coming back to the complementary skill set uh, so it's very essential that uh, you have uh, a technological as well as industrial complementary skill set so for example in our case uh, i do belong to engineering and technology but i also had a industrial uh, background where i could see uh, some of the problems which we are trying to solve right now uh, in the logistics industry so spent few years there uh, uh, which kind of helped us to uh, validate that problem statement and while shahid is coming from the technology background where he has spent like several years in the robotics multi robot uh, systems swarm intelligence these are the areas he has worked in or researched in uh, so that kind of helped us in terms of solving the problem in a speedy manner uh, instead of just building the company with lot of overlaps it becomes very difficult uh, uh, in order to have a, a speed of execution so the complementary skill set helps you in that like i can focus on uh, customers business he can focus on the technology part in in quick time we can actually uh, go for the next milestones uh, versus some other co-founders who might have a might not have this kind of a complementary skill set uh, typically people end up with uh, maybe for, uh, partnering with their friends or people do, who they know in this yeah, batchmates yes yeah, batchmates so of course it's it's not a bad thing but it's like most of the startups fail right so uh, this this is kind of a this model of uh, forming the company is very structured you get a highly cali- i would say high caliber people to choose from uh, based on your background you also select them so if i am looking for a co-founder i sh- i will look for someone who has a complementary skill set uh, not just because he is a friend uh, so okay. this is very important a very good point shahid you agree with that yeah totally totally it matters right i mean uh, it just uh, offloads the work as well very very efficiently uh, i am focusing totally on the product on the concept development and and pramod is helping me to validate in the very first uh, layer right like i don't do obvious issue like i, I if i'm not from the industry i'll just make something it doesn't make any sense at all for for me it does but pramod being from the industry is very quick where you can say no i don't think it it makes sense at all like, let's work on something else so so you, your iteration increase your iteration become faster and again i mean the 3 months time you have to do all these things so it matters it really matters how you can really equally distribute your work and can still work together and complement okay. each other just to give one example right i think within 30 days period we could identify a problem we could build a concept we could apply for a patent within like a first month i guess so this is basically because we came from bit different backgrounds he could work on the uh, technology part uh, we of course i could also assist him and we could talk to the industry people based on our network uh, and validate what we were building was really crucial not just yeah. just another startup doing something uh, yeah. in technology I'll, i'll just want to add on that interesting thing like in a very very uh, like in a, i think when we started making the uh, developing the concept i asked him when i want to visit some of the facility and see how it works right he said don't go not now he said you know you, if you go there you become biased you have already seen how the things are working you not come with something very new right and it matters right and and it, it matters so yeah i mean uh, uh, and and help me because i i came with a very fresh perspective you know uh, thinking you know what do you think this is a problem or how you how you gonna solve it as a technical person forget about the industry and then he will come in the picture and he'll say no this is not right rather than giving me the complete explanation i become biased to it 
right so that's okay. how you are able to innovate very quickly but even eventually after we we, we get to some point where things are looking fine we I, then i visited i observed the uh, work and everything and then i further uh, made the system better but you know the fresh mind the fresh perspective is always important to innovate yeah okay good let's get more specific now can you tell us about uh, the first product idea you had how you came up with the prototype how you got product market fit validation from the customer how did uh, entrepreneur first help in all of this yeah uh, so initially we identified several problems in the warehousing industry we had multiple ideas in my i think 9 10 ideas i guess we had uh, entrepreneur first kind of helped us in terms of narrowing down to one hair on fire problem uh, uh, and then focus on that particular one problem statement instead of trying to solve five different things uh, that was a very good feedback in the beginning uh, later we uh, approached many customers potential customers across the globe uh, uh, reaching out cold through cold emails cold messages uh, from different parts of the globe and uh, then taking the feedback that what we were building makes sense for them uh, so we had lot of customers who had given us uh, confirmations for the trial even before we had anything ready Uh, uh so we had customers from china we had customers from india uh interested in taking the pocs and like kind of a pilot trials before we just just basically just the concept nothing like we didn't have a robot there so we first validated this we got the feedback from ef at every week period we used to talk to them we used to get their uh, more more from the structure point of view how to position ourselves and all that uh, and then after 3 months then we also had a Uh, uh i would say a funding offer from hacks uh, fosv which is a vc fund from the us uh, they have a partnership with ef uh, since we were a hardware startup like a uh, uh, then we had a, a offer from sosv and hacks which is like a, a vc fund run accelerator program in china uh, so this is where we began our product development so initial 3 months were purely on validating the concept validating the solution then only building the product so this kind of helped us in utilizing the capital very efficiently because in our kind of business uh, building the robot without really validating that doesn't make sense it's not just an app it's a end to end system it has software it has hardware so it, the initial validation was very if, if, essential for us um i i and saying that like uh, i totally agree what pramod has said and and as i mentioned earlier right the the continuous feedback loop that helps a lot Uh, from a, from a completely third party right uh, what we are doing and what our customers are saying and what the third party thinks and it's kind of helps us to improve and improve rather than being just you know uh, uh, be again uh, you seem what biased on what we are doing we think okay the customer saying uh, correct right so it's right you know but maybe maybe it's better to have more one more perspective to keep on you know uh, keeping you on, on the floors and 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 that helped uh, we had the one assigned mentor every week we used to meet him to try to understand how to do what to do Uh, sometimes just to you know bounce our head with also weekly that the team like you know they will uh, they will tell us uh, for, uh, just a small uh, talk on how what is problems how you how you identify a problem uh, what is just a theory though people know it just to reiterate you know how it helps how to go to market how to do a market survey so these all kind of came together uh, and and uh, that's how that's where we are right now right uh, we are able to talk to customers in a right way asking right questions and getting the correct feedback uh, these all things are extremely important and uh, if helped us to do that So, how did you choose the name of your company? And in one or two sentences, how would you describe the what your company does? Sure. Like, what's your one-line pitch? Yeah. So, uh, Unbox Robotics. The name was chosen because we want to create automation and robotic solutions, which can be deployed right away. Like, once the robots arrive in the warehouse, you should be ready to automate your process. Uh, like, taking out the robot from the box and then just putting that to use. uh instead of spending like several months to get the warehouse ready with some special floors or any construction activity so that unbox name came from that and what we are building right now is uh, uh it's for the parcel sorting operation which typically done in uh fulfillment centers and distribution centers of these e-commerce and logistics companies uh so our first solution is a uh, uh, ai powered fleet of robots that can be deployed in like less than 2 weeks in a 50 to 70% less of footprint compared to the existing solutions uh and that sorts the the system sorts the parcels hundreds or thousands of parcels every hour into hundreds of locations uh, uh in a very efficient manner uh increasing the productivity roughly by 4 to 500% uh so that's the that's the whole end to end solution it's a full stack solution it has hardware it has software that's what we are building 
Can you share some numbers now? Uh, how old is the company? How many employees do you have? How many cities are you in? What is your scale yeah. journey in India and overseas? Yeah. Some some sense of the scope of the company. We are a one year old company. We just completed our one year last uh, two, two days back uh, on 20th of May. Uh, currently, we uh, are almost like 14 people, mem like team. A uh, couple of, uh, I think three people will join in uh, coming few months. Uh, we are based in Pune. Uh, although we started in Bangalore, we are registered in Bangalore. Uh, we also have uh, uh, support, uh, I would say, uh, from Hacks, which is based in Shenzhen, China, in terms of any uh, manufacturing related, uh, I would say, guidance. Uh, we get that from them. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a one year old company uh, so far. And what are some of your future plans? Like, where do you see yourself in three years, five years? Are you looking yeah. that uh, far out or are you just playing it cautious for now? Actually, uh, we are looking for a long term plan is uh, it's a global market we are addressing. It's not just the Indian market. Uh, we plan to enter uh, other countries from next year uh, or uh, towards the last quarter of this year or early next year. Uh, we have some inbound interest coming from customers from other countries. Uh, so we are just getting ready for that. First, the plan is to deploy uh, solutions and spend some time in India and then go out in the other markets as well. So Southeast Asia is one of the uh, very good markets for us uh, we are looking at. Uh, and of course, there is some interest coming from the US as well. Uh, so these two are, I think, will be the first uh, outside India markets for us. And how is this whole COVID situation affecting you? The big question now is, should companies freeze for a while? Should they downsize? Should they... Uh, pivot to a new operation. What are you guys doing to deal with the COVID situation? Uh, I think for us, it's actually impacting positively because we are building something which uh, helps you do, I would say, uh, execute a process in the warehouse with minimal manpower and with limited footprint. These Both these are very critical uh, resources. Uh, and in the long term, actually, it is going to help us whatever situation right now is. It's an unfortunate situation, but... Uh, it's just going to uh, accelerate the adoption of automation and robotics across multiple industries and warehousing is one of those. Right now, we our customers are facing constraints in terms of manpower. People are going back to their hometowns. Uh, whatever, even if they find people, it's very essential that they follow social distancing. Even if you have one worker getting affected, you have to shut down the whole facility. All these problems are can be solved through uh, whatever solution we are building. Uh, and this is not for just the COVID situation, but in the long term, in, term, in terms of business continuity plans and also sustainability plans, automation will be very, uh, I would say, essential and it's going to impact positively for us. Yeah, saying that, uh, as you mentioned, like, you know, this should, should company should pivot or should they reduce the team size? I, I think uh, if in a very early startup stage, uh, team is the most important asset you have. Uh, try not to get rid of it. Uh, probably we have to work around and try to you know uh, reduce the cash burn somewhere else. Uh, it's very difficult to build the team. I mean, it's one of the mo most challenging problems for startups, I would say. And yeah, uh, I think uh, we should not be offloading the team for sure. But yeah, we should be trying to figure out some other ways where we can control our cash burn, and yeah. maybe give more in incentives in such situations for your for your team members, like for insurance and stuff like that. Uh, that helps you keep afloat. Maybe not in a short term game, but long term, it's very important, right? Uh, so that helps. And secondly, we try to, we try to uh, make, uh, sanitize our online work, right? It's very difficult for people to come back and work online all the time. So how can we, so we, like, uh, we uh, promote them, promote them, written down the nice document, how to, you know, go, 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 go about it. How can we make a daily routine, for example, how can we make our daily routine better so that we still feel like we are in office and working as, as usual to, to make sure that our productivity is not going down. So all these uh, steps, I think, helps uh, to be afloat in this particular situation. Great. Uh, we are now about halfway through our one-hour panel discussion and a lot of good questions are coming from the audience. I'll take some of them along with my own questions. One very good question which has come in from the audience, uh, gentlemen, is um, uh, theoretically, yes, automation, there's a demand for it. It's good for your company and so on and so forth. But practically, there are many serious issues. Like you can't go out, uh, you're stuck at home. How do you open the office? Uh, how do you deal with the health of your employees? Are there any internal arguments you guys are having, how do you stay emotionally fit, physically fit, and aligned with the mission of the startup? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, this is like very interesting question. So uh, we also uh, could not open our office in the last two months. What we focused on, how we can deliver the productivity in some other way so that the end-to-end -end productivity is still the same, if not more. Uh, so we focused on our refinement of our design, mechanical, 
uh, design or software all those efforts we increase our efforts in those domains while we were not able to build our robots in 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 uh, person in the office uh, so we of course like i can't share the exact numbers but we reduce our cost uh, by significant margin by improving the design of the robot we reduce the weight of the robot by a significant margin so a lot of efficiencies were improved in the last two months uh, we also have been talking to new customers uh, because this area is something people are looking at in the warehousing sector so we are talking to many customers in india or outside india where they are looking for automation uh, so yeah we we try to uh, identify areas where we can deliver as a team uh, if not in office but how can we do it from home is so we created a, a kind of a playbook uh, to uh, to basically manage the whole work from home situation uh, so that the team is productive uh, despite working from home very nice this is actually a, f a formal document kind of thing with checklists yeah. and what to do yeah. uh, what to do if things don't go right it's fantastic yeah. that's very yeah. good so very we did good. that in march and then i think yeah march yeah. And then we kind of explained the whole team that this is how we will be working uh, now onwards uh, and this is how we followed okay the next question is uh, a bit on the financial side um, how have you done fundraising did entrepreneur first help you with fundraising what kinds of funding are you looking at how are you doing cash management in this very tough situation and how do you plan at times of uncertainty nobody knows how things are going to pan out even in a month or three to six months from now so how is this affecting the financial planning and foundation of your startup yeah uh, so in terms of funding the ef was uh, uh, so ef gives you a pre seed funding uh, in our case we got funding from ef uh, entrepreneur first and uh, sosv uh, which runs hacks so there, there, this was a pre seed funding round which uh, we got from them and this helped us to develop the initial uh, pocs do do the trials with customers uh, that was very helpful uh, later we also got inbound interest coming from several vcs in india and we raised uh, another uh, round so far we have raised about 800000 uh, uh, dollars in, in last uh, i would say 10 to 12 months uh, going forward of course we will uh, look for funding uh, uh, in, in order to expand the uh, scale of uh, our current uh, team and also in terms of other operational aspects of the company yes so well uh, it's, it's, it's obviously it's very tricky times and no, nobody can predict it so what we try to do in general is like if we have some uh, cash burn and we know that okay this money is going to last for a certain amount of time we try to maximize that like you know if you are looking for 12 months burn rate how can we increase that burn rate to, to the a timeline for 18 to 20, 20 months maybe given the situation going to worsen another next 6 months as well so that's the best any company can do right now and uh, we are trying to do that again as i mentioned not cutting down onto the team that we have we already have a good team not adding more team maybe that we do few other for the expensive which you might have thought to do uh, uh, quickly uh, maybe you might have to do some uh, buy some uh, equipments for office for our robots and stuff like that that we basically uh, push it back uh, because of this lockdown whatever pilots that we, go, we we are planning to have is again pushed for few months so we just try to be very cautious when to buy when not to buy and just take the steps that way i mean uh, increasing your runway is the mo is, is the best thing you can do right now Yeah, it, again, it's very it's very complicated. How do you really still sustain the team and be having a long run? But uh, we need to find a, a middle path within that. Yeah, I think it's very important to increase your runway. Do it for more than twelve months, fifteen months, eighteen months. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, depending on the business, people do have to, of course, let go of people in the interest of the company and the the whole team. You can't just be protective every time. All the you have to be practical as well. But in our case, we were. we did some cost cutting of course at the leadership level uh, but as a team anyway we are lean uh, we are not really uh, like we are managing the end to end solution development uh, with a small set of people uh, so we didn't find the need to let go of people uh, and we also increased the uh, runway anyway by doing some other cost cutting measures one more question has come in uh, which is how are you guys doing marketing and how, what's your mix of full time and part time people are you outsourcing some of your work to contract laborers contract staff for different kinds of activities like uh, media engagement or recruiting uh, chief financial officer things of that sort so no we we have do have like uh, generally say 11, 11 full time people but we have some consultants uh, on and on when required so wh whatever we can outsource we outsource uh, just to you know minimize your burn rate and make your keep your team lean as much as possible 
Uh, other than financial issues or operation work, uh, we do have some agencies uh, like from CACS uh, who take care of the stuff. We are not like a huge company with so many people. So uh, this kind of, uh, for this work, we don't need a full-time member. Uh, these agencies do, does a good job for that work. A lot of questions are coming in on how to join this uh, Entrepreneur First Program, EF. I will have that information towards the end. There's a website and a date for announcement for people who want to apply for the next program. I'll come to that in a minute. But we've got another couple of questions for us to go through. Uh, one is, um, uh, how would you say, uh, what would you say are the key pieces of advice you would give to entrepreneurs out there? Maybe can you give a piece of technical advice, a piece of management advice, a piece of overall motivational kind of tips based on your journey? Uh, I think uh, finding the hair on fire problem is the key. Uh, find that problem, build the solution, validate that solution very early on uh, in your journey. Uh, sometimes solution might not get validated, but it's better to fail early rather than fail later. Uh, that is the key metric for, uh, I, I would say. And if you are building a solution, that should be way better than the existing ones, uh, because that will differentiate you. Because if, the, if, if just a, it's just a minor improvement, uh, probably it doesn't make sense to do a startup. It has to be really, I would say, high on value, like 10x or 100x better. Uh, that's kind of a jump you have to lo really look for. Uh, these are the two things I can think of. Yeah, and well, the the, the... The people who are uh, intending to be an entrepreneur or planning to join EF, uh, I would just say there is never a right time, never a wrong time. Uh, if you have uh, skills, or you have found the right passion, or you have identified some interesting gap in the market, or you have some research work with some potential solution which can be applied quite well in the industry, uh, just take a leap of faith. Another popular buzzword these days, you know, is fail fast, fail forward. Uh, make yeah. mistakes quickly, break fast, and so on. So, what is your advice for startups on how to approach failure? Uh, in the hardware sector, obviously, failure is much more uh, catastrophic, maybe than say in the software sector, perhaps. So, what are the different kinds of challenges you face? Maybe you can give a couple of examples of how you worked around some of these challenges. And based on that, how should founders learn from their own experience? Learning from your own experience is the most important kind of learning. So, what are some tips, examples you can share? in terms of learning from setbacks and failure? I think uh, fast basically is uh, iterating through your whatever solution you're building. Uh, talking to your customers continuously in the early stages will actually help you fail faster because you might be building something based on your own assumptions or based on your ob observation, but ultimately the customer might really be uh, looking for something else. So involving them in the first initial few months or initial few, I would say first year, uh, if you're building something like uh, in, in, in something like whatever product you're building uh, and then get, getting the feedback and then coming back to the customer and then again reiterating. So involving the customers and um, uh, I would say in, in the evolution of your solution is very important. Uh, so yeah, so that that's one important point I can say. Yeah. On, on the engineering side, again, uh, it's, is you cannot get the best product in first iteration, right? But you can you can try to minimize your number of iterations to reach the best product. Uh, the key ingredients, team. I mean, extremely important uh, to identify the right people with the right talent, right? I mean, they they can do a, they can help you minimize the risk of the first iterations of the product. Secondly, it's 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 extremely important to keep on interacting with the industry. Like if see, I have found a robot startup, there are many startups out there. Most of the entrepreneurs are happy to happy to interact, happy to share. It's better to learn, right? I mean, people who already built a robotic startup, talk to them, ask them what was what went wrong, what went right, and and and, and there's nothing wrong in asking. It's it's always it's always important to learn from the experience from other people and also from your own experience. Sometimes you are into the unknown territory. Territory. It's better to find somebody who already been there, talk to them. Uh, uh, personally, I've, I've I've been graceful. Everybody has been very helpful. Like I just simply message on see I I, I wanted to do this uh, startup on robotics. Me and Pramod. I found, okay, uh, many of the companies are doing it. Let's try to find somebody from the team, right? Maybe a hardware engineer, maybe co-founder, depending on what company and who are talking to. Talk to them and you know, ask them what went wrong, you know, what went right, what do you suggest? These kind of uh, feedbacks keep on, keep on, keep you plan, uh, plan whatever product development in a better way. Again, first attention is never right on hardware. Uh, so you have to in generally say like, if you want to keep a budget of POC, keep a budget of three times of what, what your expected cost is because you're, you're going to fail. The things that that's going to happen, but how can you minimize that? That's something that we need to really see through for the hardware startups. Okay. 
both of you mentioned that there are many other startups out there, etc. So what kind of competitors do you have? How do you look at the big companies in this space? Are you looking to partner with them? Are they competing with you? Could you be acquired by them maybe or be part of some industry consortium? How does this work? Yeah, so many. Uh, I would say there are several companies who are operating in this, in this particular space of warehousing or logistics automation. Uh, I believe they are also doing great. What we are building is something uh, like to, I would say, uh, we are solving something which they are not able to solve or they haven't solved. They are also doing great in other product lines, what they are doing. Uh, we identified several gaps uh, uh, in, the, in the industry, uh, which are not being solved by the existing players. Uh, but yeah, we do have global competitors uh, to compete with. And we are open to partner as well. Like uh, we, uh, we keep getting, I would say, requests for partnerships or we, uh, we are working with several, I would say, big companies right now. Uh, probably won't be able to tell you the names, but yeah, we, we do have certain uh, players we are, in terms of the technology, in terms of the business, we are working with them. So are you looking to hire some people now? That's one question which came in earlier. People uh, are looking for jobs, obviously. So I guess that'll be on your website, right? What's your website anyway? Unboxrobotics.com. Unboxrobotics.com. Okay, guys. So those who are looking for more details about this company, you can check out their website. Um, one more question we have is, um, how has Entrepreneur First EF helped you all? We'll come to the details of how to apply afterwards, but can you just tell us from your own personal experience, uh, you've been interacting with them for, I guess, a year and a half now. So what are some uh, advantages of being in this program? Uh, what are some connects it does for you? Overall, how does it improve your knowledge, your skills, your networking, and so on and so forth? What are some advantages of being part of the EF program? Uh, I think right from the scratch, so uh, helping you uh, with the finding a co-founder, uh, then validating whether that team makes sense, what are like in the long term, by giving you a structured, I would say, feedback every week uh, and keeping you motivated all the time uh, to, to work on something really, I would say, big enough. Uh, the problem should be big enough uh, to begin with. Uh, so all those initial few weeks are very critical uh, at the EF program. So right from finding a right team member, or I would say co-founder, uh, then problem statement and the validating the solution, all those things EF gives a very good feedback. And they also provide you the initial capital uh, right from in the beginning, uh, when, uh, when you're just joining the program, you get a stipend. Uh, if you are, I would say financially, uh, you have problems, then you can of course uh, make good, uh, good use of that. And once the team is, I would say at a point where they're looking for funding, EF can help you uh, uh, with the pre-seed funding as well. And uh, uh, later part of the uh, program, they also help you uh, connect with the investors ecosystem uh, for the later, I would say, subsequent round of funding. Uh, so that is another, I would say, help uh, they, they do uh, give uh, to the companies in the cohort. Yeah. And, and, and just to add on that, like uh, the, they're available, right? I mean, sometimes uh, say we were already in the phase of uh, raising another round. We never did that before in our life. So what to look for, what to not look for is always, we can just simply mail them, you know, we need some time, 10, 15 minutes call, can we have a talk? So that helps, right? To, to, to just correct yourself all the time. Or for example, we, we, we developed some financial model. We worked on some, you know, uh, cash flow, uh, you know, some, somebody to validate that for us as well. So this helps uh, along with what Kamo said, uh, definitely. It, it, there's no doubt. It's a long-term support that we have, which always keeps you on the toes. Even though yeah. you've graduated from the program, you can be part of the communication network. You can get support from them, even though you finished. Yeah. Like you guys met, you became co-founders, you launched a startup. But that doesn't mean the program is finished, right? For you, you can yeah. still lean on them, sort of. So informally sure. also, we can always reach out to them. They also have a global community of 200 plus startups across the globe. Uh, people can interact with each other in terms of hiring, in terms of any technology partnership, in terms of potential customers. Uh, they have presence all across the globe. That also helps you. Uh, so it's basically through EF direct formal kind of a program. Also through indirect this informal or I would say indirect kind of a platform, uh, be it through Slack or be it through their websites or whatever platform they have. Uh, it really helps us. Okay, one good question has come in just now, which is, uh, is it possible for founders to be doing their work part time? So in, in your case, were both of you fully committed to the startup from day one? Or you were in a big company, you had some ideas, you poked around a bit, you did both together sort of multitasking, and then you switched. So uh, there are benefits of both sides, I guess. But in your case, what did you recommend? In our case, it was a commitment. Uh, so 
I had done this kind of, I would say, part time kind of starting up, but it didn't work for me. Uh, I think 100% focus on the startup is key. Uh, of course, it depends. Uh, like, I, I can't say that that is wrong, but for, in my personal opinion, 100% commitment is very essential. Extreme. Uh, totally right. I mean, we need 100% commitment. I mean, any startup, there's a lot of work. Uh, part time, I, I just don't get the idea how, how we do it. Like, you know, how can you fo- give you 100% to that particular work? Also, you have you you have basically uh, a co-founder. I mean, I mean, it's a responsibility that you both give you 100% for each other as well and for the company. Uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's not fair and we should be full-time available if we are committed to something. Yeah, it's okay. a leap of faith. Sometimes yeah. you leave your job. The risks, risks are there. Of course, startup is not that uh, it's leap of faith, as I mentioned before. Yeah. You have to take that and you have to be fully committed to what, what uh, to what you're doing. Right. We have just a few minutes left. We can't take all the questions out there, but let me take one which connects to what you just said, risks. There are many risks out there, you know. In fact, right now, if you look at the whole global economy, uh, there are trade disputes between countries. Some people are saying pull out of China. Some people are saying manufacture everything locally. Don't have yeah. local supply chains. Only have pan-national uh, within your country kind of uh, supply chains. So, what are some risks that are opening up in your areas, and what are some of your plans? Maybe if you can share some of containing these risks. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so in, in supply chain, definitely we we uh, we have to. Uh, slowly move to a complete local but uh, there are some technologies where uh, we are still growing and uh, currently we are depending few few from other countries so what we are doing it like on parallel we are trying to partner with some other companies and and develop the technology uh, in, in a very simple term if i say it's a, a simple motor a bldc motor or something uh, we, we are usually getting it from outside how can we make it in india for the same quality so we is a side project we try to take on a parallel so when we grow this this thing can even we can eventually remove the uh, dependencies from other countries as much as we can like certain things we cannot like silicon uh, and all, all of the electronic components come from outside india doesn't manufacture it as of as of now and it will take almost quite a lot of time to do it but that uh, other than that wherever we can uh, we are trying to uh, you know identify those issues and trying to solve locally maybe it will take some time on a parallel and maybe it will take some fund as well but it's very important given the situation so i would say creating the redundancies in the supply chain our own supply chain yeah. so that Customer supply chain is already impacted, the logistics companies. But in our own supply chain, also we are, uh, I would say, finding new partners in India uh, uh, and uh, developing them in the long term. From the long term perspective, uh, if this kind of event happens, then we should be we should have multiple players to to support us. So that's what we are working on right now. And this was, I think, even before uh, the last two months, I guess this was always uh, already in place. The, we are already had a plan. Before the last summing up question, I've got an important announcement for all the attendees out there. Many of you are asking, what is EF? EF, once again, is Entrepreneur First. This is a talent program for founders, co-founders to meet each other, launch a company and scale their ideas for products. Uh, they have a cohort coming up, which will close up, which will close on 31st May 2020, which is next week. And the website is joinef.com. Once again, join efentrepreneurfirst.com. So go to the website. You'll find all the details about who's eligible, when to apply. Once again, the date is 31st May. But in the last few minutes that we have, I want to ask uh, both of you, um, what is your overall sentiment right now in this whole COVID kind of era? Uh, How are you personally trying to stay optimistic? How do you find maybe spiritual solace? How are you staying focused when everybody's so worried? You know, almost every conversation eventually ends up in What's going to happen next? Will we survive? Uh, how long will this job last? When will international travel begin again? There are more questions than answers these days. So what are one or two key pieces of advice, inspiration? What kind of inspiration would you like to leave our audience with based on your own journeys? Uh, I would say uh, personally, we have found so many opportunities in this particular pandemic. Uh, maybe because of the nature of the business we are in, robotics and automation. Uh, so we feel that how do we... Uh, I would say, how do we scale up really fast, uh, considering the opportunity we have? That's what in uh, on, I would say. That's the top priority for us. How do we scale up really fast now, considering we have the opportunity? Uh, and uh, with, uh, despite there are some obstacles in terms of lockdown and all that. I mean, uh, probably uh, it's, it's again is one of these uh, uh, things that uh, co-founder of uh, EF told us, like you know. In, in your entrepreneur journey, it's like a sign we will get a very good time, very bad time, very good time, very bad time. You have to be stable. And and, and, and that's uh, that's the key, I guess. Uh, you have to be very, very patient, very, very stable in whatever situation comes up. Uh, in current situations, yes, uh, we are working from home. Things are a, bit, a, bit, a little bit uh, haywire, but 
I think uh, focusing on the bright side, like you know, use this time to uh, to do some uh, your own skill polishing. You know, you learn something new. Uh, focus on your health. Uh, these kind of things helps you keep sane in such situations. I would say. So, would you say a routine is necessary? Do you need to have a daily routine? I mean, in a startup, things happen all the time. Sometimes you have to work on overnight. You got to work on the weekends. So, how easy is it to have a daily routine in your life in this day and age? Both of you. Yeah. So, in uh, in this situation, currently we are working from home. So, we are kind of having a routine, like as a team. Uh, we uh, try to meet uh, in the beginning of the week, and whole team meets. Uh, on top of that, uh, every uh, every fortnight we have this small event called Tech Share. One of the uh, team member will just you know share something. It could be anything. Could be technical. Could be non-technical. So this kind of work, uh, things helps you. Uh, one thing. Second one thing is we have this uh, work from home uh, meeting every day from five to uh, from eleven to five. So people are usually it's because it's there. People are kind of automatically get disciplined. You know, okay, eleven o'clock we need to everybody's coming on call. Let, let let me come on call as well. It's not a strict talk something like that, but it's like you know it's just a psychologically it makes you that. Daily routine. You 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 wake up at certain time. You have breakfast. Then you have to go to work. Five o'clock you finish. So it's it's very important to have this discipline. Uh, we have noticed that uh, I think some time back where Rohit, one of our uh, leadership member, was saying that you know I think that the team is kind of going a little bit. Uh, product is going down and team is like kind of going low. So we again we thought really actually we should f- uh, focus on this. We started doing this uh, weekly meetings and uh, and enforcing this discipline and now things are much better. Like last whole month was amazingly productive for us. So uh, I think that's a take we had from this last two three months experience. Yeah, yeah, like giving this uh, structured way, like structured, uh, I would say playbook to the, car, the to the whole team at the yes. end. I would say start of the lockdown was very helpful for us. A few 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 key things like uh, Pramod mentioned the document, like yeah. Yeah, uh, like uh, you know you should be trying to make your home more or less like an office. Like you, know, you should have your own dedicated place to be there. You know, sit there and work kind of thing. So these kind of things psychologically help you to be, you know, uh, be undisciplined and be focused, be more productive. Uh, I think the document from others made it pretty interesting one for all this. We also made it kind of a compulsory for everybody to take one of the courses to learn something new, maybe anything it could be. So it kind of uh, some once in a while, when we interview, ask what's happening with that course, did you learn something and stuff like that. So it helps. Very good insights, very good tips. Thank you, Pramod. Thank you, uh, Shahid. Uh, thanks to EF also. Once again, the website is there in the chat window now. Uh, JoinEF.com is the website. They have a program closing on May 31st. Do please, do please check out the website for more details. My key takeaways from these two outstanding young entrepreneurs are the importance of three Ps. Patience. You have to be very patient. This is a long haul. It's not just a six-month, one-year, two-year program. This is a very long five-year, ten-year haul to build a big, successful company. Uh, second is perseverance. You have to keep pushing and pushing with your product, with your customer, with the tech team, with finance, etc. to get your thing off the ground. And thirdly, a playbook. That's a, something new I learned today from your team, which is even in these very hard times, there has to be something systematic. People keep saying there's no stability, uncertainty is the new certainty. Even in that, you need a playbook, some kind of discipline to keep going ahead. So thank you all uh, very much uh, in the audience, more than 200 people I see. We will have, I guess, an article and a recording of this available online. And uh, Pramod Shahid, hats off to the amazing work you're doing in these very difficult times. I think you've inspired all our entrepreneurs out there and given very good practical answers. Some of them planned, some of them unplanned, but very good feedback and dialogue from all our audience and from both of you. So all the very best. I do hope to meet you all in person uh, someday soon. I come to Pune very often and I hope you come to Bangalore. And definitely at various Your Story events, we would love to meet and have a chat together. So thank you all very much. It's now five o'clock. Our time is up. Thank you all and have a good week ahead. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.